do that. bring out our first guest of the evening who's actually here. Indeed. As a, I guess Mike counts as a, as a guest. He's here in spirit. He's here in spirit. He, I'll tell everybody that you all clapped at his pro tips and had a wonderful time. Our next one is here in body. Yeah, he's here in as many ways as he can be here. Yes. He is the coach of Lehigh men's basketball. Indeed. He has led them to the NCAA tournament. He's led them to the Patriot League championship. Hoping to do the same again this year. It's Lehigh basketball coach Brett Reed. Let's bring him up. Yeah. Brett Reed, everybody. All right. Thanks for doing the show. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So, uh, good to have you. And it's, it's Dr. Brett Reed, right? You are yes, it is. a doctor of, I'm assuming, basketball science. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. sometimes not. You just ask our players. No, yeah. actually, it's uh, instructional technology, believe it or not. I believe it, because that sounds like a real thing. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I, Pat Chance and I went to the, the game last night. It was, it was fan appreciation night over at, at Stabler, where you guys play. And you played uh, Colgate and won by a lot. So well, congratulations. You didn't know this, but if you didn't come to our game, I wouldn't come to your show. So right, that, was, <laughs> yeah, that was the deal we signed to get you here. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was a wonderful time. I actually wanted to ask you, because the, the first half uh, didn't go very well. And then the second half went incredibly well. And you guys won by, uh, it was 20-some points, right? It was the final lead. Yeah, I thought the first half was a tough game. Colgate, our opponent, yeah. shot the ball extremely well. Our defense was fairly solid. Our energy was decent, but they just stepped up and really made a bunch of plays. And a lot of teams would probably falter a little bit in the second half, lose a little bit of heart, maybe not work together to the same degree. But we've got a, a really good group of guys who show a lot of character and a lot of unity. And because of that, even though there were some obstacles, they continued to perform through them. And then what an amazing run we ended up making to make a competitive game. Yeah, oh, it, got, it went from really close to just a blowout in, in a matter of minutes. Uh, but my question is, at, at halftime, you guys are all in the locker room. Was there, like, an inspirational speech and then some slow clapping and then everybody, like, <laughs> rallied? Like, like in uh, Hoosiers, which is a movie that Pat Jansen told me about last night. <laughs> so you didn't know about Hoosiers before last night? No. <laughs> I'm not a big... We got a lot of work a big to do sports here. guy. Right. Everything uh, I know about basketball, I learned from uh, NBA Jam. We actually have a TV in our team room, yeah. and what I did is I just Did you decided, watch the show? I just, is that what it is? I, I, I figured that would help us a little bit, That's because good. obviously what I was saying wasn't working. Right. It's inspirational here, I'm pretending to be on TV. But you do, you have a, you have a bunch of excellent players. Um, CJ McCall was, was tearing it up. Oh, he's terrific, isn't he? Isn't yeah. he a lot of fun to watch? And yeah, it was, it was great. And then you had another player hit uh, 1,000 career points last night. Yep, his name's Gabe Knudsen. A guy from Iowa, C.J. McCollum's from Ohio. We recruit from all over the country. Mm -hmm. You know, you take somebody who, C.J. McCollum, he's a terrific player. You're talking about a guy that NBA scouts are coming to take a look at. And, and he's uh, a junior this year, right? Yep. So you'll have him next year. Yep, we'll have him next year. We'll have him next year. We'll have Gabe Knudsen as also well next year. So he's only a junior. Oh, he started go. for as for our championship team, both of those guys, as a freshman. It put us in a great position to win a championship, to play in the NCAA tournament. We were really one, young last year, starting three sophomores and a freshman, and mm. now we're on our way with a, I think it's 19 and something record, 19 and s Justin, you're out there. What's our, what's our record? <laughs> 19 and seven. 19 and seven record, which is pretty impressive. It's pretty solid. Yeah, absolutely, and a lot of basketball still to be played. We've got a home game. Against the Lafayette Leopards and, and that's like the big rivalry, and Fran right? and next Saturday. Yeah, that's the big rivalry. Yeah, Lafayette. that's a big rivalry. Because yeah. they're the worst. Well, you know, <laughs> I think it's because of the closeness of the two schools. Not necessarily because, you know, we give Lafayette that much respect for basketball. We think we're a lot better. <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, Lehigh uh, is, of course, my favorite college basketball team. Uh, <laughs> that's good. I'm glad you're saying that with me. Every college basketball game that I've gone to has been... A Lehigh home game. <laughs> and you, I just want to point out, every uh, basketball game that I've gone to, you guys have won. So I feel like I'm contributing as much as I can. Some more games. I like the ratio. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd say we, uh, we take them out to, to Lewisburg for the Bucknell game. Okay. Take that, Bucknell. <laughs> I, we, I, we were actually uh, live tweeting the game and making jokes, usually at Colgate's expense. Uh, and I had him explain what box him out means, and then I yelled it when I thought it was appropriate, and about one out of six times, it was when you would want to yell, box him out. 
Which, for those of you who aren't as basketball savvy as I am, it's uh, during a rebound. You still don't know. I don't still know. know. I did hey, something you, with a rebound. You say that with a lot of authority. Right when they now, miss, really. everybody goes for it, and you yell, box them out, and then they get it and win, right? That's box them out. Yeah, yeah, you, you got about as close as I expected you to get. Yeah. So you, well, look, you had some of the terminology for, yeah. you know, you had checkmate, right? Yeah. And we talked about first base. Well, we have slam dunks and one-on-one, -on -one, so, you know, there's a little bit of basketball to work into the show. <laughs> that one works. Where are slam dunk? I, I, he I, was saving it for me, right. you know. Yes. I want to take I, all I'm, your good I'm, material. I'm a point guard giving you the assist. Yeah. Three, oh. three points. That's a probably a good one. <laughs> Half workshop sounds difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do uh, in between... Uh, not periods, quarters in basketball, right? It's halves. Halves. Yeah, there's, there's two of them. Yeah. So see, that's honestly when you split them. Last night, I was supposed to call my wife at halftime okay. to tell her that we're going to be home in however much longer time that is. Uh, but I didn't realize halftime was happening, so I thought the end of the game was halftime, and uh, dinner got started. You just it's wanted more fun. basketball. That's all. Right. Was. I thought like, I was having you, such a wonderful the time. The game was and over. You're like, hey, we get another break. another whole game. Yeah, I thought there were <laughs> there were still two more to go. But they they had like fan events. There was uh, a kid shooting blind three throws, uh, free throws with a to try to win uh, a hoagie. I think <laughs> it seemed like a lot of work. For, like you could just give that kid a hoagie. But I think I mean it was a big one. It was like two feet, but. I think you know if you can shoot a free throw because I don't I don't think I'd be able to sink one for a hoagie if if a I don't feel safe. Blindfolded? No, I'm I'm thinking probably not. You would make it rain. But uh, speaking of difficult things, we'll we'll shift it back to basketball. You mentioned you mentioned the good record. Uh, that's included uh, a lot of a lot of tough teams as well this year. I mean, you've gone on the road to play Michigan State uh, and played them competitively too. A lot a lot of games like that. Um, does that basically say the the confidence that you had in your team heading into this year? Well, I think it was a big factor for us. We, I mean, we played some terrific, terrific teams, even on national television. The Michigan States, St. John's, going to Iowa State. And believe it or not, 12 of our first 15 games were away from Stabler Arena. So we're doing all this, and we're setting a, a school record for non-conference wins uh, in a season and doing it with so many road games, which is a big testament to our players and their ability and willingness to work together, even in adverse situations. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're the coach of Lehigh now, uh, but I want to start from the beginning. Okay. Uh, how did your parents meet? Uh, <laughs> that's, I mean, that might be okay. a little... Okay, maybe we'll how skip much, ahead. How much time ahead. do we have? But we'll that's ahead. more of like Dr. Brett Reed episode one. <laughs> skip ahead to the good stuff. Let's well, go. Yeah, New we'll, hope. We'll skip ahead. You're, you're, you're from Michigan, right? Yep. You ended up playing college basketball in Florida. Yep. Now, what in the world would take an 18-year-old boy to Florida for college? Well, you know what? You uh, spent a little time in, was it Nebraska? Yes. Okay. So, I, Michigan's a lot better than Nebraska. <laughs> okay. Most things it, are, but uh, Michigan, without a doubt. Michigan winners, Florida winners, the chance to play basketball, do all those type of things. I mean, it, it kind of worked out all right. But, uh, so you... you uh, your first coaching job after that was uh, as a director of ops, correct? Well, actually, I this was kind of a cool thing. You know, I had a chance to coach with my dad, oh. who was a coach. So I grew up in the gym. I was a, a towel boy, wiping up sweat on the floor, ball boy chasing things that down. That sounds gross. Doing all this. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it kind of was at times. You know, the worst thing that happened that with sounds... my dad. No, this was worse. <laughs> My dad's players one time stuffed me in a locker and closed it up as like a eight-year-old kid. I yeah. still am a little claustrophobic. I would. That yeah. was it. Like with the sweaty towel that you had to use because that's <laughs> even worse. So I, I grew up in kind of a basketball family. I had a chance to coach with him, which was a great experience. I learned a lot from him and kind of that opportunity. And then, you know, from there, because I was fortunate enough to win a fellowship while doing my PhD. I talked to my wife and I said, hey, I'd really like to do this coaching thing. I'd like to go after it completely. And because I had a stipend from the fellowship and all those type of things, I had a chance and I said, honey, wherever you get into graduate school, we'll take a look at it. So we took a nice trip out. It was a business trip out to Hawaii and looked at the <laughs> University of Hawaii, uh, did some things in California, but ultimately settled at a school, the University of North Carolina, Greensboro, in Greensboro, North Carolina. 
So, yeah, the, for those who aren't familiar with uh, a director of operations position, which is what you held, that is not exactly the most luxurious position, is it? No, it's a little bit better than the, the, the towel. Towel, sweat it's board. like a step up from yeah, it is, mopping but, up sweat but on it's, the floor. It's like about this much. No. It sounds important. It, it sounds does. More I mean, it's a sweat director towel. of basketball operations. Yeah. It's like a whole thing. Operations. Yeah. But that's not really what it works out to. No. You know, I'm, I'm helping with the travel, and we do a lot of video analysis and helping out with that and kind of filling in, helping all the other coaches do their job well. All right. And then jump ahead. You end up at Lehigh as an assistant coach, then eventually the head coach. You've been here for about 10 years now total. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've, you've climbed the ranks, uh, you've taken the team to the NCAA tournament. Yeah. What is, what's kept you in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Well, it's not you know, a romanticist. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a, I, I've actually been working on this. You know, being a, a PhD student, I have a dissertation, and I've been doing a lot of research into this whole romanticism thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't think if you got, you, know, you might not realize this, I've been here a little bit longer to appreciate it. There's another city in Bethlehem, uh, or excuse me, in Pennsylvania, called Hershey. And you know, I think there's a conspiracy there because you know we put flowers and chocolate together with romanticism. And what do we have here in Bethlehem? We have peeps. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's the way of those Hershey Native people. Yeah. Yeah. Peeps. Sugar coated marshmallows. That's, that's what gets you going. Well, those Hershey people, they don't want romanticism with anything associated with beef. So, you know, you just got to stuff those marshmallows down. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Heart-shaped beef. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're just born. Make them happen. <laughs> so, you, you, you have your PhD. Uh, you know, was, so was basketball, you know, the fallback position, Division One basketball coach? <laughs> Actually, I went into it because I had some, some people that were really important and, and great mentors to say, why don't you do it now? We'll help you out. You'll get assistantships. Just spend the time. And I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't. I wanted to get out of school. I wanted to move on to the next thing. But at that point, I'm really glad I listened to him before I had a family, before I started with other responsibilities to really invest in myself. Because to be honest with you, the thing that I thought I would be doing is maybe coaching basketball and teaching at a school, maybe a smaller school or doing something like that together. But really, that. The PhD has not only helped me to make sure that I'm coaching for the right reasons because I could do a lot of other things, mm -hmm. but also it, it's made me a better coach because I've, I've studied, I've learned things, uh, I've studied instructional theory, learning theory, all that type of stuff. We really try to apply it with our players and I think that's part of the reason our players have been successful. And obviously, you know, recruiting and our assistant coaches bringing in good players makes me a much better coach as well. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Well, you, you did mention all the players from all the different states. I did notice that there were none from Nebraska. <laughs> That's because Nebraskans are not uh, good at basketball. We, we have a history of it's uh, not farming. Bob Boozer, Eric Strickland, and, well, okay, that's about it. Yeah. That's about if it. there was yeah. more growing corn involved in basketball, <laughs> your people would just nail it up and down. Uh, but you guys actually have something in common. You both attended uh, Wayne State. Uh, that, that's correct, yes. You, went, you got your PhD at Wayne State. In Michigan, correct? In Michigan. And then there's a Wayne State, obviously. In is Nebraska. it like a franchise? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it like University Well, I did go Phoenix? to Eckerd College for my undergraduate degree, so Walgreens is kind of, you know, trying to work on me there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were debating, uh, you know, determining which Wayne State was better, but considering, you know, that... Uh, one of three Division One basketball coaches with a PhD is going head to head with the co-host of a fake television talk show. We figured it's a push, so we were just going to skip that. Uh, instead, we we tend to have a, an audience participation game before we go to the intermission. Uh, I think we're going to do the same now. Uh, which Wayne State is it? Uh, should we pick two people for that? Yeah, let's make it happen. Uh, I'm going to enlist my my two writers here, Mike Fortino and Tyler Rothrock. Uh, if you if you don't mind, pull uh, pull a, a man and a lady from the crowd. 